Welcome to another Igloo Imaging Tutorial. This is a beginner's guide to Adobe Illustrator CC. And when I say beginners, I mean I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. This is for people that have never used Illustrator before. If you just started, it might be helpful, but if you know quite a few things, then it's just going to be telling you stuff you've already done. So if you are new to Illustrator, hopefully this will be helpful. I'll try not to make it too long. This is a vector graphic, by the way. These are the kind of things you can create in Illustrator. Speaking of which, let's get started. What is Illustrator? Illustrator is a program from the Creative Suite that enables you to draw vector graphics. What's a vector graphic? A vector graphic is something that is based on vectors rather than pixels. Photoshop deals with pixels. Illustrator deals with vectors. This illustration here is from a poly artwork tutorial that I did. If you want to have a look, um, feel free to see how that was made. This is a photograph. Look at the photograph. If you zoom in, you can see it's made of little squares. Each one of those pixels. Now a photograph only has a certain number of pixels. You can resize it, but if that doesn't have a high enough resolution, when you enlarge it, it's going to start looking fuzzy. A vector based image like this is made up of lines and no matter how big you make these lines you never lose quality I could make that image the size of a building and it would be fine so those are the two main differences Photoshop Illustrator there's a lot more to it but that's what Illustrator does it creates vector graphics if you want to get started and you're in Illustrator and you want to follow along then let's create a new document artboard go up to file hit new and the new document window will appear there's tons of settings in here far too complicated and extensive to get into now but basically name your document and pick a size you can have pixels centimeters millimeters inches whatever suits the job you're working on for now make a square document a thousand by a thousand there's the orientation in there, there's a the number of artboards, so if you're doing a double-sided job you'll need two. Um, if you're sending a job to print you'll need a bleed, you can put your bleed in there, it's normally in millimetres, three millimetres for the UK, and your colour mode. Usually CMYK which is cyan, magenta, yellow and black for print, four colour process print, or RGB which is red, green and blue for screen. You've got resolutions in there, print is 300 dpi, medium if you need to send a better proof than just screen is 150 and then screen work anything for web is 72. So once you've decided on the size and your spec hit create and you're good to go. Let's talk about what we can actually see the interface. When you've created that new document you'll have an artboard in front of you with a black outline and if it's not selected so if we go up to that one it won't have a black outline. You can see this change black I'm selecting that one it's black so we can see the artboard in front of us. If we've pressed Command and R, then we can see the rulers. These rulers are based on whatever your unit measurement is of your document. Now there's tons of different layouts. If you hit layout there, there's stuff for painting, printing, tracing, typography, there's automation, essentials, everything like that. I've worked in Illustrator since 2003, and this setup is good for me choose your own setup whatever works for you basically i've got my tools i've got a navigator for moving around artboards for seeing how many artboards are in the job appearance just tells me whether there's strokes and fills on things characters is for typing paragraphs again for typing color color guides adobe color themes for choosing color palettes if you're not that great with colors i've got my swatches which i can add to brushes for doing different brushwork don't use that an awful lot but it's there stroke a stroke is an outline so if you've got a fill color and a stroke color the stroke is the outline and you can choose the weight the width and all sorts of different things dash lines arrow heads things like that i've got gradients so you can color in shapes with gradients transparencies you can change the opacity and the blend mode and then i've got a line pathfinder transform 
and layers. So if you want to set up like me, feel free. If you've got your own setup, go for it. But that is what I can see around here. So let's move on to the next one. I mentioned there fill and stroke colors. So a fill color is here at the bottom. X is a shortcut to get to your fill color. And if you've got that one in front, then X will get you to the stroke color as well. So you can click between stroke and fill here. Okay. So if I just draw a shape, if I go up to here and select the ellipse tool, I'll just click and drag, doesn't matter. It's gonna be, if I click off that, it's a green shape with a black outline. Green shape with a black outline. If I just hit the fill and then hit white for my swatches, it's filled it in white. The stroke is still there, it's just very small. So if we get rid of that, I can click the black one and click none. So there you go. That's, you can change it to whatever color, whatever color you fancy. Pen tool. If you press P, that's the pen tool, looks like a pen nib. The pen tool helps you draw shapes kind of freehand so if you click it draws an anchor point and then wherever you move the mouse the cursor it will follow if you've made a mistake and you want to command click that'll just get rid of it so P click 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 and when you go to close it the circle will appear and that's now a closed shape if you want a rounded shape you can click and then click and hold and drag out and that will let you create a rounded shape curved shape back to the circle and there we go the pencil and the paintbrush do similar things but rather than having to click click you can keep your pen down and draw a shape freehand again just fill it in with the color so Paintbrush is similar, but doesn't act quite the same. It creates one long path. So to edit that, you would then have to click an anchor point and start moving things around. Shapes. You click and hold, you'll see the other shapes. Rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, start and flare. Select one, click and drag, and you'll draw your shape. In CC, once you've drawn the shape, you have selection versus direct selection. So if you press A, that is direct select, you can select an anchor point and move it. If you select V, you will select the whole shape and move the whole shape. So A and V, get used to those. A is white, V is black. Those are the shortcuts. So A drag it over those anchor points and you can move them. Also, when you direct select with A or V, you'll see this blue box appear. This is a bounding box. And from there you can change the size. So you can hover over these corners or these midpoints and move the shape, resize the shape. If you click the corner and hold shift, it will keep the proportions of your shape. You can hold Shift and Alt, and it will expand the shape from the center point. Now these little circles that appear are for rounding off the corners. So you can drag those in to round your corners. If you have a star or a polygon, same thing applies. If you go to these corners, you can round off the corners. If you just want to do one corner, use your direct selectress A, and then just one circle appears. So you can do that. There's more to that tool. I have loads of other tutorials on, but much more in depth on, on various tools. So feel free to have a look at those another time. Anger points, bounding boxes, and resizing. That's what we just covered. Copy and paste. So if I have an object that I want to copy and paste, this is probably one of the things I use the most in Illustrator. I can select it with V, so the bounding box appears, and then I just hit Command C and Command V, and it pastes me another one. And it'll, if I hit it again, it'll paste another one. It's just in the same spot. Now, if I want to 
paste in place, which is very important to use in Illustrator, select it, press Command C, and then Command Shift V. And it's pasted that shape in exactly the same spot. Very useful for when you're using spot UVs for print and things like that. There you go, you've got the two shapes. Arrange and undo and redo. So if I change the color of this, select the fill, hit gray. This gray shape is in front of the beige colored shape. Now, you can go up to object and arrange, bring to front, bring forward, send back. You can see the shortcuts here, the square bracket with the command up and down. So if I select a beige one, I can command shift and square bracket on the left sends it to the back, square bracket on the right sends it to the top. So we're gonna put that one back in the top, command shift, right hand square bracket, brings it up to the top. Now if I'm not happy with that, I can command Z, which undoes things. Or I can command shift Z and it redoes things. You can command Z as far back as your preferences will let you and you can just hold it down and go as far back as you'd like. Very useful if you've drawn a shape. So if I go back to where I was and think, oh, I like that rounded polygon shape that I deleted a while back, I can go back to it by pressing Command Z. Then I can select it and press Command C, and then I can redo. I can go back to where I was and then command V, which pastes that other shape. It's very useful um, if you've made a mistake or you want to go back and copy something, but you can't move it once you've gone backwards. Now, eyedropper. The eyedropper tool is great for coloring, for copying the color of something. So if I decide I want to make that gray, rather than going over here and clicking gray, I can just press I and click the gray shape. Or I can click the base shape, green shape and so on and so on. It's very useful. If you've got a shape with just a stroke like that, it will copy just the stroke. So press I, copy it. I, copy. Very useful for speeding up your workflow. Opacity is exactly as it sounds. Over here in transparency is opacity. If you lower the opacity, you can see through the shape. There's blending modes, which are very, you could go on about blending modes all day. Um, multiply and overlay are ones that I use quite often. But that is again, another in-depth tutorial. So those are those elements. Let's move on. Guides, smart guides. A guide can be created by going hovering over your ruler, clicking and holding and pulling something in and if you pull to the edge of a shape, it should snap to it. Now, smart guides need to be turned on for this. So if you go to view, down to smart guides, make sure there's a tick there. Smart guides, when it's off, you can just move over shapes and nothing appears. When it's on, it will show you anchor points, measurements, the guides will snap to things, as long as you make sure that snap to point is on, under view. And when you're setting up a document and you need some margins, a good way to do it, if I just unlock these by command alt semicolon, I can get rid of those. If I want a 10 mil margin, say for example that square is 10 mil, I can move that to the corner and it snap to the corner, then I can draw my guides to there. And then I could go to the other corner and draw my guides there. So those are smart guides and guides. Now, alignment. You just saw me move this to the edge of the box by hand, but there's a quick way to do it by pressing a button. Up here, you'll see this little box is aligned, or I've got my align open here. So if I select the box and align to artboard, I can then just click one of these vertical align top horizontal align right, and then I can draw my shapes. But without moving it across, I can just do bottom, left, and then do it center, center, and it's in the center. If I change it from align to artboard to align to selection, then I can select two and align them together. I select three, align them in any way you like. 
I use a line probably more than any other tool. Type characters. If you press T, text will appear. If you click once, you can start typing. There's a lot um, to do with typing in characters. Um, you can play around with this. If I copy this, Command C, I go to the end, Command V. You can change the size, you can change what's called the leading. Um, if I go on there, the leading is the distance between two, two lines. You can change the kerning, you can change the tracking. Tracking is the distance between each letter. Stretch it out, make it small. You can squash vertical scale, you can squash the horizontal scale or expand. You can change, set off the baseline. So if you wanted to put one of these up, send it up. But again, that is a tutorial in itself. The main ones you're gonna to wanna to know is just hit T, type something. You can resize in the same way we did. You can centralize, you can right align, left align. Again, change the colors, just click the swatches. You can also use the eyedropper tool, hit the eye, hit the green, and it'll copy the colors. And it will also copy the size and the certain characteristics of that font. So if, I, if I've got a title, which is, let's say, nice and big, and then my body copy is, let's say, bold. If I start typing again, I can select all, hit the eyedropper and copy. And if I kept typing, I hit the eyedropper and hit that one. That is something I use an awful lot. Layers, I don't really use layers unless I'm doing a spot UV. And a spot UV is a printing method. Check out the tu tutorial on spot UVs to work out layers. But in Illustrator, there's not much point because you can select things and move them around without too much trouble. Saving. If you go up to File and Save As, it will save as an AI file, that's an Illustrator file. I always save my live fonts, my job as an Illustrator file before I do anything for print. When I save things for print, I will convert my fonts to outlines, just Command Shift O, and then I will save as a PDF. So when I save as, and here I'll hit PDF, when I hit save, I have various options. I do have presets in the print options, which have got bleeds and different compressions on, but that again is a different tutorial. So save your original file and then work from there. If you need a proof, you can go to file and export and save for web. If you want to save a lower resolution, 72 DPI version, so you don't clog up someone's inbox, and you can go from there. Hopefully that's given you a brief understanding of Illustrator. If it was useful, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.